What's up world, it's your boy Jumarcy here live from the top of Hollywood, California. And in this video, we're gonna break down how to study great rappers, how to study the GOATs, how to study your favorite artists over time. The first and most important question is, how does the rapper experiment? How does the rapper experiment with their art? How are there different phases throughout this artist's career and how do they use that to experiment with different ideas and different vibes that they're going for? Rappers are just like painters. And just like painters, they go through different phases phases, artistic phases. So a painter might be really into a certain color scheme over the course of their career, like the blue period in Picasso. I don't know if that got anything to do with the color blue, but I know he called it the blue period. Painters might be experimenting with realism for a certain amount of time versus expressionism and things like that. Rappers are no different. Rappers go through phases creatively. They develop themes. They go through different phases of their life. You want to make sure that you're studying those as well. So the first thing to do is identify the proper phases of the rapper. What artistic phases has this artist gone through? How long was that phase? That could be an album, that could be two albums, that could be three albums. Let's think of the example of J. Cole. J. Cole started in his mixtape era really finding his voice, but he was already developing things that would come on later on. So he had storytelling in his mixtapes, Friday Night Lights, things like that. He was developing his ability to produce himself and make his own beat. He was developing the raspiness in his voice. If you listen to early, early J. Cole, he wasn't really the raspy over the mixtape era, that's when he really developed that kind of voice. The sideline story was his attempt to be pop and trying to get into the popular number one rapper era as we know. And he's talked about that in the interviews. You know, he's throwing on Jay-Z. He's trying to get that massive single with the Kanye sample and things like that. That is the phase that he was going through is trying to be mainstream when it didn't fit him that well as we later found out and he later admitted. Born Center is where we start to see his music go a little bit dark. So we start to enter in a slightly darker phase for J. Cole. Now, in Four Hills Drive, he's gonna be a perfect mix of those two. Uh, the attempt to get a great pop sound produced by himself, raspy voice, big choruses, all the things that we heard leading up to that, but also the darkness that we saw in Born Sin. Of course, in his later work, he started to get into more political themes, uh, more black empowerment, more jazzy tunes, etc. But if you study him as an artist, you start to see these phases and you see it develop. Very similarly, Eminem, if you go all the way back to Infinite, you could tell he was trying to compete with Nas and the Lyrical Miracle rappers and things like that. We Slim Shady even as a character. The Slim Shady EP and LP develops the character of Slim Shady. It's the dark, it's the cutting people's hearts out of their throats and things like that. I don't know if you can cut a heart out of a throat or drag a heart through a throat, but that's the kind of stuff he was rapping about. As he rolls into the Marsha Matters LP and the Eminem show, he starts to develop more personal themes. He starts talking about his mom, his wife, all these things. Encore and relax laughs are the drug, vo weird voices part of Eminem. Of course, his later work, we get to the point that now he's doing all these kind of crazy flows that you really first started hearing in the Encore Relapse era, but he's still not afraid to talk about personal issues that he developed in his second and third album. Now, these are broad strokes, but this is just the basic way that you would study themes and start to see how artists experiment with themes. We're not going to run through every single artist ever, but similar to themes and phases, the artist experiments with their voice quite heavily. The way I see it, every rapper has roughly five go-to voice tones. They got the voice tone for the ladies, the tracks for the ladies. They got the gangsta, I'm angry, street banger, don't mess with me voice. They got the sad and serious voice. They got their just regular bread and butter, pretty much how they talk voice, but in rap form. And then they have what I call character voices. So those are voices that they use for different characters. You think about Jay-Z on 99 Problems, DMX on Damien, Kendrick's famous layered voice or his high-pitched voice, and Eminem on every every funny track he's ever done ever. But studying their voice tones and why they use certain voice tones for certain tracks, extremely important as well. Next thing to study is their production slash song structure choices. Remember how we mentioned in the beginning of the video that you wanna watch how they experiment, right? So first thing to do is be familiar with the go-to song structure of any rap song. 16 bar verse, eight bar chorus, 16 bar verse, eight bar chorus, eight bar intro and outro. And if we're in the 90s, then you add another third 16 bar verse and eight bar chorus. Once you have that, you start to study how does the artist adhere to that in their pop songs, their serious songs, their storytelling songs. How closely do they follow that? How much do they experiment with that? In what phase do they start using bridges if they use them at all? Do they use post courses? Do they use pre courses? Do they break down song structure to an unexpected level? Think about something like Eminem's role model where he only has a chorus once after something like a 28 bar verse or something. Even better example is the work of Kanye West. If you study, college dropout is pretty formulaic in the way that it's 
structure. As far as song structure is concerned, it's 16 bar verses, eight bar choruses, with a few exceptions like two words and last call and things like that. But as time develops and you're getting into graduation, 808s and heartbreak, Yeezus, he's experimenting with song structure all the time. And in his particular case, it changed the way we make songs in hip hop for the entire genre. Be sure to study their flow choices, particularly do they choose to change their flow consciously, as you might hear in Eminem where he talked about, he felt like his first few albums, he was kind of behind the beat, so started with Eminem's show and then moving into this crazy wacky flow now, we have a flow that's very, 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 very in pocket, or it might be unconscious for a number of reasons. I think about Beanie Siegel, for example, who had some health issues and his flow started to slow down. Still dope as hell, still love Beanie Siegel, but there are other considerations for why the flow might be the way it is. So be sure to study flow in each individual phase as well. And lastly, you should study what I call the intangible, changes in their life circumstances. Really good example of this is Meek Mill. I'm sure we're all very familiar with the legal struggles that he had to go through, the rise and fall and then rise again. Changes in political persuasion or the way they wanna live their life. So J. Cole, again, being a really good example of his music and changes in musical style reflected his personal political and lifestyle decisions that he made as he grew older and older. Or how other life interests and things they wanted to do outside of just the music affected the way that they made their music. A really good example of this for me is ASAP Rocky, who's kind of living every guy's dream out in London right now, just being fresh in fashion and sleeping with every beautiful woman in the city in London and all Southern England. Or Andre 3000 has kind of gone into other interests as well, so his music output hasn't been as consistent as before. I call those the intangible. Things like song structure, things like topics can really be affected by your life circumstances, the intangible. So I want to see you in the comments. What is one rapper? What's the number one rapper that you wanted to study at a technical level and go through these steps that you haven't yet? What is one rapper that you want to get more into studying and study the goats that you haven't yet? I want to see you in the comments. I read every single one. I respond to every single one. And of course, if this is your first time watching this, be sure to subscribe, like, and share with the homies. Thank you again for watching. It's the big homie Drew live from Hollywood, California. I'm out.